Hey, what's up y'all? It's Tosh Marie and welcome to my new channel, Tosh Marie Travels, where I'm sharing with you all of my crazy, unique, wild experiences traveling solo around the world. I watch a lot of travel videos and I don't know about you, but I'm always wondering like, how did you get started? Like, why are you doing this? What is your journey? How are you able to do this? And what I found is that nobody really shares their journey. Like they share their journey traveling and going to different places and seeing cool sights and things like that, but they never talk about what it is that they really do. How are they making money? How did they start this journey? What really inspired them to do that? And I wanted to share with you my experience and how I got to this point where I decided I'm gonna travel the world solo. question in these travel videos that I have and that I see people in the comments have is how in the world can you do this like what are you doing for work how are you making ends meet what's going on I know a lot of folks on YouTube with a ton of followers 50,000 plus uh, 500,000 views all that they probably make their money on YouTube but me I just I'm just getting started I don't even have a hundred subscribers yet but I will soon and I will have endorsements and I will have brand partnerships and all that jazz. So I work in software sales. I've been with my organization for over 10 years. And when this opportunity arose back in 2018, I believe, or 2017, I said, yes, of course, I'll work from home. I know you need the office space. Sure, I'll do it. But it wasn't until 2022 that I truly took advantage of this remote work lifestyle. I saw our head of IT post on LinkedIn that they were so appreciative of our organization and the remote work policy because it allowed them to travel to Italy and spend some extra time in Italy. So I took that as my sign that I could do the same. So in 2022, I took the leap of faith and I went to Mexico City for about 40 days and I worked remote while I did it. I purchased a secondary like traveling monitor that folds flat it's like a tablet and i can just plug it into my work computer and i've got two monitors and i can work from anywhere you should not quit your job and go travel the world on a very small savings or on unemployment do not travel above and beyond your means if you have a job if you're working remotely you want to make sure that you're making enough to pay for your rent or your mortgage when you come back, your car note if you've got a car and, or your lease, whatever it is, your cell phone, all of those things, make sure that those are covered and you have additional money essentially to be able to travel and live a second life because that's what you'll be doing. If you take a long-term trip somewhere, you're going to have to pay rent for that month or two months that you're gone. I'm not gonna sugarcoat anything on this channel because I really want you to know my full experience to hopefully be able to inspire you to be able to do the same thing or something even better. And I can watch your channel and be like, wow, I wanna go do that. So the first thing is you have to have your financial situation set up and ready to go. One thing that has helped me uh, maintain both of the lives is I rent out my place while I'm gone. Now I do own my home. I'm still paying a mortgage, but I rent my place out on Airbnb so that the Airbnb can pay for the mortgage. So that's one less expense that I have to worry about. And I can use the money that I would have paid on my mortgage on my short-term rental overseas. That works for me. It may work for you. Maybe you don't own your home. Maybe you're renting an apartment. See if you can rent out your room while you're gone. Rent out your space, allow that money that you get to pay for your rent, and then use your paycheck to fund your living expenses abroad. That's a very easy thing to do to make sure that you're able to fund both lifestyles. Uh, when I'm overseas, I eat out a bit because it is less expenses, expensive, but I also buy my own groceries and cook at home. So, or at, home my, my abroad home that's another way that you can cut down expenses while you're abroad 
So I did a lot of research. I watched a lot of travel videos and I saw others just like me, a woman, um, not many women of color, but a woman nonetheless, uh, traveling solo to Central America, Mexico specifically. And I said, wow, like I can actually do this. The time difference isn't crazy. It's only an hour behind my work schedule. So that actually helped because I was able to get off for an hour early. And it's not too far from home. Um, or if I have to come to a meeting, I can get on a flight and fly back. Now, why did I choose to travel solo abroad? I have a good friend that was doing remote year. Now, remote year wasn't good for me. I looked into it. Um, I don't, I'm not down with the whole roommate situation and then like restricted travel. So like they told me when I had to leave this country to travel to another country, I, I wasn't down for that. And also I wasn't ready for a four month trip or a one year long remote travel. So I said, you know what, I'm just gonna go. I was raised in the Bronx in New York. I'm pretty good with, you know, keeping an eye out and being alert and watching my surroundings. So I just took the leap of faith and said, hey, she loved Mexico City, so I'm gonna go there and see what it's all about. And again, it was the best decision I'd ever made. A lot of people say Mexico City is dangerous and it's, you know, uh, it's not a great place for solo female travelers, but my experience was completely different. I felt very safe. I traveled in the morning time, in the afternoon, in the evening. I was all around that city, mostly in the touristy areas though. I did venture out a couple of times to the places where the locals uh, hung out, but I made sure that I stayed within a certain radius because I didn't want to mess around by myself in uh, any neighborhoods that I didn't belong in and that I couldn't really communicate well enough to talk with people and to get myself out of situations if I had to. So that's a tip I will say is make sure when you are traveling solo that you are very well aware of your surroundings and that you give yourself a radius and do not travel outside of that radius. So another reason why I decided that solo travel was for me is because I have some incredible friends. Don't get me wrong. I love my friends. They, uh, are, they are supportive, they tra have traveled with me to several places, and they are fun to travel with. But I don't really have friends that can say, hey, let's go here for a month. Let's go travel to this place for two months. I have one friend, but she is with Remote Year and she is doing her own thing and I love it. But I don't have any close friends that I could do it with. So. I wasn't going to allow that excuse to hold me back from doing what I truly wanted to do. So I said, you know what? No one's gonna do it with me. So I'm just gonna go out and do it myself. Now, when I have in Mexico City and Guadalajara, uh, I had folks come visit me, which was really fun. Uh, in Mexico City, my bestie came to visit for the weekend and we had a lot of fun. We stayed at the St. Regis Hotel and just had a really good time. It was fun, but that was only for about four days or so of those 40 days that I spent out there. And then when I was in Guadalajara, my partner came out for a week, which was so much fun for my birthday, of course. And we had an incredible time. But again, I was there for three weeks alone. So it's fun to have like people come out and visit while I'm overseas because it doesn't make me feel as homesick as I probably could feel if I was just out there by myself the entire time. So that's one thing to think about. Are you a person that has to be around your friends and your family often, or can you sustain? Can, or will you be okay with FaceTime or text messages or things like that? Traveling solo is so freeing. Like it feels like, I don't know, like I just gained this unimaginable, unexplainable strength or level of confidence that I'd never had before in my life. Uh, it has allowed me to just be 
feel like I'm free. Just be free. Wear whatever I want. Say whatever I want. Um, do whatever I want. It just really allows that freedom that we all search for in our lives. It's one thing that is, is a, a similarity amongst many people is that we are living to feel free. We are working so that we can feel free. We are breathing and doing exercises so we can feel free from all of these things that are trying to hold us back. And traveling solo just kind of leaps me into that feeling of freedom that I just never felt before. And I truly hope that when you start this journey, or even if you're on the journey right now, that you feel that same freedom. Um, I will never forget in Mexico City, uh, there, I went during Pride Month and I walked in, in the Pride Parade. I didn't pay, I didn't ask anybody if I could. I just got a onesie, uh, like a leotard, and I bought some, uh, some rainbow uh, feathered wings and I put those on and I had my rainbow socks on and I walked the parade and I felt like liberation, liberated. I just felt like this, like, I just felt great. I A lot of people wanted to take pictures and things like that, but it just felt like I could do and be who I wanted to be and, and I could just exist in my own right, in my own being and not be criticized or made fun of or looked at a certain way. I was just free. And it, it was one of the best days of my life. And I had so much fun. I was by myself at Pride. And interesting enough, people were walking around naked, which I found to be very interesting. But um, I had fun. I wasn't judging them. They were having fun too. And um, that, again, that little, it's not little, that big, a feeling of I could just exist and not worry about anything it was really good and it was fun and that's what keep that's the fire and that feeling that I uh, keep within me that continues to um, fuel my desires to travel and continue to travel solo abroad you found anything in this video that was inspiring or that was like, hey, like I didn't think about that or that you just really loved. Subscribe, please, like it. I am looking forward to being able to do this full time. I know it's gonna take some time. I've gotta get my 4,000 hours of view time and my 1,000 subscribers, but I have faith and I believe that I'm gonna get there. And I'm just thanking you and I'm so grateful that you watched this and I hope you follow this journey and that I'm able to follow yours as well. Until next time, cheers. Come here. Say hello. This is my baby Bentley. He is a Chihuahua Dotson and he wants to come say hello. <laughs> so it's raining and pouring outside and um, he just wants to be close to me.